My name is Dirk Schäfer. I'm from Germany, based in Berlin. I'm 52 years old and since 25 years a part of a German drug user movement. I started using drugs when I was 17. I was one of the, the pure opioid users. I did my stuff and then I have to go to jail for a time and then I got a huge new opportunity to work for the Jazz Network and uh, that was uh, the main part of my turnaround. Jeg kjenner folk som er traumatisert. Jeg kjenner folk som daglig lever med det som kalles problematisk sorg og kraftig depresjon som følger av de flotte menneskene som de var så glad i og som har gått bort. Dette er egentlig, vi snakker om overdoser og tall og statistikk, så, så, så overskygger litt at dette var enkeltindivider, det var mennesker som en rekke folk var veldig glad i, hver dag var bekymret for, alltid håpte på at det skulle gå bra, som betydde fryktelig mye for dem, og så ble de revet vekk. Aril har selv vært en av de vi prater om, rusmisbruker. <laughs> Ariel has been a drug abuser, <laughs> not drug addict, not drug user, a drug abuser. My name is Ariel Knutsen and I'm the leader of the Association for Humane Drug Policy in Norway. And that's a drug user organization. I've been using illegal drugs, still illegal drugs, since uh, the 80s, when I was 15, 16 years old. And until 1992, I was in what they call institutional drug treatment. I have been to the drug uh, treatment again in 2014 to 15 and in 2017. My name is Jørgen Kjær. The organization I represent is the Danish Drug Users Union uh, on Danish it's Borgerforeningen. My personal drug use career started when I was 23 years and uh, I'm 67, so uh, 44 years ago. I've been on heroin uh, mainly. We are lucky in Denmark that uh, we have access to white heroin, which is not usual in, in many other countries. So uh, it's possible to snort, and uh, I have snorted uh, for the whole of my career. That's an old one about shooting and hand washing and uh, um, it was the first um, of these pictures which is it's paid for the, from the government and uh, it was also a success for us that they paid something like this. The Jazz Network is one of the oldest drug user networks um, all over the world. This year we got our 30th anniversary. Yes, stand for the J for junkies and the E for X user and the S for substituierte, that means people in opiate substitution treatment. It was a time when, when Nancy Reagan uh, started their campaign, uh, say no to drugs. And we um, did it in another way and said, say just to drugs. And just with a J in the beginning. Our first picture is a picture of uh, the Jazz Network. We did that 25 years before, in the end of the 90s. With um, the upcoming of HIV and AIDS, drug users came to German AIDS organization and asked for support. Support in knowledge, because uh, many drug users didn't know a, no a lot about HIV at that time. And um, the German AIDS organization did some seminars for them. During one of these um, workshops, uh, they found the Jazz Network. They said, we put our activists together and we build a network of people
people who use drugs, people in opioid substitution treatment and uh, former drug users. From that day on, German AIDS organization was the main supporter of drug user movement in Germany. All groups in the different cities have the same name. They all call jazz normally and we have 20 to 25 of them and that is um, one thing uh, which is very motivated for, for many people that they see it is not only one group with five or ten people, it is a whole network all over Germany. We got um, 180 members and then we got uh, 350 around. They support jazz, they're coming to the groups, but they are not members. That's a picture of um, yes activists uh, during the 25th anniversary in Cologne. And that's the oldest lady, she's about 80. And but we have also younger ones, as you can see. Since the 1960s, we had open drug scenes in Oslo and in many other cities. And since the 80s, with the Just Say No area, Reagan, we started criminalizing much more, putting more and more people to jail, up to lifetime in prison for using and possess, possessing drugs. And uh, then we started to have very many drug overdoses. And Norway is, has for a long time been one of the three countries in Europe with the most overdoses. And it was when the HIV epidemic started in the 80s that we started to turn around and look to Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands and started very, very careful with some harm reduction efforts. This comes in different colors, so we, we don't uh, share needles. And this is naloxone. This is the antidote for heroin and other morphine medication. Yes, we're giving up and training people to use this nasal spray or antidote. So if you come and find a person that has had a heroin overdose, you can save the, their lives in seconds. You can't come to a, a humane, a scientific-based uh, drug policy without speaking to those who use drugs. It's, uh, we know what it's about, we know what's, uh, what are the good things to do to create a better society for us and for you who lives with us. In 1996 we got the first drug user organization that was a part of uh, the temperance movement, the drug abusers organization. And that was all until um, the harm reduction movement came. So this is ascorbic acid. Uh, most of the heroin in Norway is made for smoking. So you have to put it in water and boil it up with some acid to make it injectable. And when, when we don't hand out ascorbic acid, they use citric acid, which is much, much, much stronger and creates more harm. So this is harm reduction, pain reduction, and it's white powders in these little bags and it's called acid. So the police don't like very much when you go out with this, hey, you want some acid? It sounds like we're doing something criminal, but this is very important. A lot of the um, harm reduction efforts is because of uh, the signals coming from the drug users and what we needed. But there was an organization representing them opposing harm reduction. So we needed more uh, drug user organizations. So we started up in 2006 and, uh, in, and then now we are five drug user organizations. Working for drug users' rights, promoting harm reduction like needle exchange, uh, drug consumption room, uh, heroin prescription and also to um, substitution program. And we're having a big switch campaign in Norway to inspire injecting drug user, users to start uh, smoking heroin instead of injecting. It's a little hard, but we're making big progress in this campaign. So it's very important to us to have these smoking foils so they can choose to smoke when they want to try to smoke instead of injecting. And from this year, we're handing out more uh, single um, smoking foils than um, needles. Just this year, it's past each other. And when we go to the riverside, and backyards and so on, we don't find so many needles anymore. Uh, we find smoking foil. 
So the culture is changing. And where uh, naloxone treats a heroin overdose, this is prevention. Drug users right movement in Denmark uh, started in 1993. Uh, it was basically a user, user group of uh, methadone users. The government has been uh, fair funding us and uh, we're still fairly funded and we have the most fantastic uh, premises. Uh, we participate in meetings in, in the city and uh, social ministry and health organization and health authorities and, and we dine together uh, almost every night. It is um, an honor to, to be uh, representing uh, 13,000 injective users and um, you have to do that uh, properly. You have to have uh, Playing close uh, and um, speak properly. In the beginning, jazz was kind of a radical opposition, something like that. They were very rough and um, a little bit chaotic, and they were against things. In that time, drug users got no rights in Germany, and it was very important to show them that is not our drug policy in Germany. We were not invited from responsible political leaders and we were outside of the drug service system. So we changed our attitude a little bit and we, we tried to, to bring things on on our own way. That's um, one of the first posters we did in Germany from German AIDS organization. The meaning is you didn't get AIDS when you use heroin because you get AIDS um, if you didn't get a clean needle and uh, we did that poster the government um, saw it and uh, we have to put it in the rubbish dump they said that this is an advertisement for heroin use and uh, yeah but now the times changed and now is it it is possible to do things like that and um, yeah, but in the former days, in the 80s, it was not possible. We did some brushes, uh, our own brushes, and with our own experience of substitution treatment, of HIV treatment and other things. And from that day on, many people saw us in a different ways, not only as uh, the rough uh, and rude drug user, they saw a little bit more that we are also interested to change the um, local conditions for people who use drugs. Now we are included in, in many very important working groups on political um, level and that's the only chance to, to change um, the things in Germany. That's the only, uh, that's the only chance we have. So we had a rally up to the parliament and on our way up we were told in 2008 that we should not just go up to the parliament, we should be invited in as an interest group uh, like anyone else in our society. Jag vill When I grew up, uh, you, dr drug users, or those who used alternatives to alcohol, were treated like enemies of the society and were never seen as resources. It was just so unfair. Our society is much better than that on most areas. So we needed uh, drug policy reform. So today, so are a few Stortings representatives here who have come to hear what you have to say. Use your voice well, and your voice is equal to the same as some absolute all others. We were in the debates and we were doing good. We are speaking, we are debating, we are writing. 
the Norwegian people really liked that. That's why all these prizes, because people liked us when we went into the media, because we did a good job. Our strength in Norway is that we are uh, what you call a, a diplomatic, we are pragmatic and we are tolerant for other people's views. We are not fighting each other, we are cooperating with each other. So we have got together and uh, made some serious impact on the drug policy reform and we are listened to, to by the politicians. If you are a drug user representative, you are an, an advisor to the leaders uh, working with them with mutual respect. Always mutual respect. That's, that's the key. We need to stop criminalizing vulnerable drug users. And if you use drugs, well, you might think about what you're doing. If you have problems with drugs, you don't need punishment, you need help. The biggest thing this last year is that when all drug user organizations agreed that we must stop criminalizing drug users, then the health minister answered us in the media and said, OK, when all of you oppose criminalization, then I must be for decriminalization of use and possession. And that is why we're now entering a drug policy reform in Norway based on the model of uh, Portugal. The response, however, will not have to be criminal. And we uh, propose that it should not be. Uh, but instead, uh, you should, as a person who uses drugs, have to meet for a municipal counseling unit. The Norwegian proposal aims to change the fundamental reactions of authorities to persons using drugs. It's an example of how states, at their own discretion, can adopt humane policy measures based on a public health-oriented approach. We welcome the approach taken by you in Norway. On behalf of our office, I welcome Norway's new proposal on the drug reform, which we recommend to move away from the punitive approach to supportive approach in addressing drug situation. Thank you very much. My name is Ari Knutsen, leader of the Association for Humane Drug Policy in Norway. I'm a drug user activist, and we wrote this petition that Ben Tøye told about. And after this, the civil society in general and the drug use organizations have been included in the work. And I remember, Mr. Hay, how we were standing outside the parliament with posters and banners and yelling at the government and the parliament, and we didn't go get nowhere. And when we were included, we have this cooperation. Now we are getting into an evidence-based and human rights-based politics. So uh, this is so just so fantastic. And Ben I thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, John. And we have been discussing this for over 20 years. We have been disagreeing. You had right, I had wrong. <laughs> We need, really need to give people more help, we don't need to punish people. The civil society has been the driving force for this reform. I was against this uh, reform for like 20 years and have been in many, many discussions with the civil society. But they convinced me that this is uh, the way forward because they had the best argument and the best facts and also the best uh, personal experience. By the way, that's the German Chancellor. Angela Merkel, she was invited by the 25th anniversary of our organization and as you see, she came. One of the, the main uh, achievement we um, uh, did in Germany was um, that we are included now. We are included in the, the most important um, working groups and they ask us um, for our meaning uh, before they uh, took decisions. Jazz was uh, part of the uh, movement to um, implement drug consumption rooms in Germany. Another thing was that we were um, closely included in the new law of opiate substitution treatment to get more doctors in, into treatment and more patients into the treatment. The Jazz Network did a um, a safer crack kit and uh, the main thing is that uh, each drug user who want to use crack got their own pipe um, 
in their pocket. It's a lighter, it's a chewing gum, a little bit water to cook the cocaine, a spoon and the pipe and uh, a small information about crack use. From the beginning on, the Jazz Network voted for the heroin treatment in Germany. We, we did that um, also in the end of the 90s. And now since 10 years, we got heroin treatment in, in Germany. We have 800 to 1,000 people inside heroin treatment. Heroin treatment is that you get diamorphine. You get it as a, as a pure medical um, substance in a doctor's office. You can shoot it or you can take a pill. And that is what many people want. They want the, the substance, um, the real substance and not opiate substitution treatment with methadone because they want to have the feeling and the rush they know from former days. And now with the heroin treatment in doctor's office, we can provide the substances who work for them in a clean um, environment. It works very well. Last week uh, I got a call from the doctor of the um, heroin treatment in Berlin and he told me that a quarter of them are, um, are now in, in business. They have work now. And th that is um, a, a huge success. I consider one of the largest successes uh, with uh, equipment for injection is that we have access to it free and that was introduced in the late 80s more or less because uh, the prostitutes uh, could bring HIV AIDS um, further on to the Mr. Hansen and um, it wasn't good, so they introduced uh, the bags with all the equipment you need for a pure in injection. And today we see that uh, we have two drug consumption rooms in Copenhagen, and uh, they save life almost every day. We have uh, worked for that idea for 15 years before it, it uh, took action. The users uh, doesn't have to be in a, a backyard or basement or dirty staircase. They can w walk into these drug consumption rooms and there are nurses to take care of them if, if they get an OD. Another thing uh, which also took us 15 years was to get hearing on prescription. Um, as is at the moment, uh, we have a clinic a uh, few hundred meters from here where the users can uh, turn up at 9 to 11 and again by 15 to 17 and uh, get an injection of pure pharmaceutical hearing. If it wasn't for the HIV issue, we would still be considered as just uh, enemies of the society, we are still criminalized, we wouldn't help in any way unless you would quit using drugs. If there wasn't for the drug user movement, you have, would have more, much more uh, forced treatment. We would not have uh, syringe programs to prevent HIV and hepatitis C. We would not have the drug consumption room in Norway. We would even not have the substitution program. In Norway, uh, we substitute uh, uh, heroin with methadone and uh, buprenorphine for 8,000 people. And then we got a science that was showing that this was much more effective, much, more, uh, much better for the society. So now we're in the injection room that has turned into the drug consumption room and it has been open in Oslo since 2005. It's around 130 injections every day and uh, there was more than 1000 registered 
and uh, here they can inject in a safe uh, and hygienic uh, environment uh, so that no one has ever died in uh, overdose in the drug consumption room in the world ever. So this place, it saves very many lives. Now we have a, a very big syringe program in um, in Oslo, we hand out up to 5,000 syringes every day. And we have that all over the country. And we have 8,000 people in substitution treatment. From to next year, we will have a heroin prescription program. So we're turning heroin from deadly criminal narcotics until a legal life-saving medicine. We are suggesting and forming now a new model to see if we can substitute also amphetamine, uh, cocaine and MDMA, the, the kind of addiction. We have still the open drug scenes. People are living in harshness. It's terrible. A lot of people are still dying and uh, a lot of thousands, I guess, four, four to eight thousand in Oslo are living in very critical health conditions. All these uh, drug-related deaths, we know we could be preventable. That's why we're fighting for a new drug policy. The opium has 73 alkaloids, but um, the big pharma thought that if they made it 99% pure and, and, and uh, selected diamorphine, then we would be happy. We're actually more happy with the one we have here, which are produced in, in the Golden Triangle, and it, it has 60 to 80% pureness, but it also has all the alkaloids. So it is, it is uh, it's having a better bust. I've I always been open with my drug use, so um, I hadn't had to hide anything. Drugs are illegal, and um, that's the worst problem we have. Uh, you can get arrested for having uh, one or two days dose in your pocket, and uh, you will be fined. We are not... Um, having the same uh, human rights as ordinary people. We are criminalized because of our drug use, and the drug that we uh, favor is uh, polluted uh, with all from rat poison to uh, sugar. The state uh, should take over the market and uh, regulate uh, so-called illegal drugs. That way we could uh, secure that they were healthy or as healthy as possible, clean and accessible uh, from the pharmacies. If we could uh, walk in at the pharmacy once a week and pick up uh, our weekly dose, uh, life would be much easier. And that's one of the political uh, ideas we have to uh, work on. I bring this poster from an international harm reduction conference with me to Germany in our office. It's about um, drug policy at the Philippines. Very impressive poster. In Germany, um, the prisons are full of people who use drugs and uh, a third of them, from 60,000 people who are in prison in Germany, a third of them are drug users. Germany is a very rich country and um, uh, drug users and um, are not um, rich persons, but um, they, are, they are safe in, in different ways. Um, most of them got an own apartment or they live with others together. And um, they got monthly their salary from the authorities. It's about 500 euros or something like that. That's not much, but when I saw the conditions in other countries where the social system is not that well equipped as in Germany, our social system and also our health system, all treatment in Germany is free of costs. If you want to have HIV treatment or hepatitis treatment or OST, you didn't have to pay for it. And we are safe in a way. We are excluded in a way, social excluded, but the government and um, also the authorities, they care about drug users in a way, not always in that way we want, 
that they going with us to regulate uh, illegal drugs. But in Germany and in most other European, Western European countries, um, we many drug users have a solid basement to live. I really never suffered any of that those negative consequences because I am who I am and I need respect like alcohol users, like tobacco users. I'm just feeling very lucky that I live in Norway and doing this and that, that, that don't live in Russia because no one would listen to me or respect me in any way or uh, so I wouldn't have no human rights. Norway is a unique democracy and uh, open society. So it's, it's, it's not just us drug users who have done a great job. It's a great society who has included us in all the process and all the political development. And we had great politicians and we had great individuals who has fought this fight for many years. We have great people in the media who has let us uh, express our views and treated us with respect. My engagement in the jazz network maybe were one of the most important parts of my life because um, when I started uh, to work with jazz, things changed a lot. I got the chance to go into opiate substitution treatment my lifestyle changed a lot. I, I still use drugs when I want to use drugs, but working with the network gave me another idea of, of my own life, what I want to do and um, the goals I want to reach. And the thing that people showed me that I could be responsible for something was one of the most important things in my life. People get older and older. I'm 52 and I think on the the average is um, also close to 50 in, in Germany of the drug user movement. I think the challenge is to invite younger drug users to work politically and on the safe help organization level uh, to keep our movement alive. It is one thing to do um, a drug user movement in Germany under clean and not that well paid but under safe political conditions. In not that rich countries, in developing countries we call that uh, drug user movements work and they are alive and they're doing a wonderful job and under very bad and poor conditions. We are, have begun to cooperate much more with each other. We are in European network of people using drugs. We are in the international network of people using drugs. We are using social media to stay in contact with each other. We cooperate on big conferences and we, we travel around the world meeting each other. And that's quite new. All the organizations can commit to the international network of people using drugs. That's the glue that uh, sticks us together. It's important to be consistent, to have demands, uh, but also to be uh, realistic. We are not a fighting organization, we are an interest organization. And as such, we cannot fight, but we can argue. And that's what we are supposed to do. If you dream, and you work persistent on it, you can be, uh, make dreams become true.